still at PAX East Unplugged 2019, and I am here with... Jeff McClinsky of Strange Machine Games. Now, Robotech is not only one of those uh, series that I grew up watching, but the role-playing game that came out for Palladium Books many, many years ago... About 30. Yeah, was one of those, like, it was one of the first role-playing games I played as a child. Right, yeah, it's, it's you know? true for a lot of people. You yeah. know, so when I saw that you had it here, I had to come and talk oh, to sure, you Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. So uh, 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 tell, us, tell us about uh, this incarnation of the role-playing game. Well, so what we, what we really tried to do and what we wanted to do was create a really in-depth Robotech experience. And that's a little bit challenging because Robotech means different things to different people. For some, it's this is a space opera story. For others, it's like antics and crazy stuff happening. And for others, it's like mecha combat and stuff like that. So we needed to really try to get all of that in to some degree. So we created a system that basically flattens out the different types of, of, of like uh, interactions that you do. So it basically formula is a formula that works for all types of, of actions or interactions that you have in the game. Tell us about the, the game mechanics. Is it, is, it, is it easy to learn? Uh, yeah, it's really easy to learn. Dice? Super easy to learn. In fact, a lot, I've had a few people who it's like their first or second time ever playing play this game and re really able to understand it. They're able to assert their agency and authority over the story in a way that they wanted to. And a lot of times, standard simulation games like D and D, you, you you have to have a, a GM that lets you do that. Where in here, the it's more integrated into the story. Uh, so you have really cool, unique skill selections. Uh, the skills are like concepts. Because one of the problems is if you make you know, attributes and you, you have pilots, uh, all the pilots have dexterity as like their highest score. So we kind of eschewed that and created a system where you can still do all the things you want to do within that system without having to rely on the standard um, attribute type system. So you roll a bunch of die sixes, you work within your element. That element is based on your career, it might be based on a few other things. If you're in your element and you do something cool, you might get a bonus. Uh, which helps you with your successes, and if you're out of your element and you're trying to stretch something, you, you know, which is fine, you may take a penalty to that <coughs> roll. Um, and you basically throw your successes in into the uh, the conflicts that the GM sets up, right? So this way you can have, for example, an entertainer observing or gathering information to help the pilots, right? The team the GM sort of builds the world for the players, or presents the world to the players, and tells them what they have information on. And then the, the group decides how they want to gather more, if they want to gather more information, or if they want to attack the problems at hand. Okay. So yeah. where in the timeline does this take place? Well, this covers all the Macross saga. So it covers everything from the initials and try to attack. We have a, actually a scenario section in the back of the book that covers uh, everything from the initials and try to attack all the way up to and through uh, the malcontent uprising, which I think is sort of like the last bit, and then of course leaving leaving Earth, but it doesn't go into the the Sentinel kind of stuff or, or some or some of the uh, the REF stuff, but we talk about it a little bit here. So it it the scenarios basically cover all the Macross stuff plus Reconstruction plus a little bit a little bit more. So there's been many anime series that have come and go. Why do you think why do you think Robotech is so even still popular to this day? I definitely think it was ahead of its time. I mean, the anime I believe aired uh, debuted in Japan in 1982, but some of the the way they talked about technology, how they used the technology, how the story was written, um, it de it definitely shows its age a little bit, but it's really really ahead of its time. So I think it still holds up in a lot of ways to, to with today. What well, you know what we have now and what we expect and what we see for the future, that hasn't really changed a lot. And I think it's similar to Star Wars in that way, too. Um, plus, take that and you said it was the first thing you did, right? The first RPG you played. Um, it was the first, like, hardcore, like, hardcore, but, like, true sort of real episodic anime cartoon series that we could watch. And people, like, main characters died. It was unheard of. And I think that really formed a resonance with a lot of, you know, a lot of us who ran home after school to watch it, you know. Um, I guess maybe if you're if you're between 35 and 50, you know, you're, you're probably have, have had a fair amount of exposure to Robotech. Now, is that the only book that you have? Is there other uh, source books for the Robotech RPG? So this is just, so these books that, that we have at this convention were flown in from China. Oh. So these are only copies in the United States. 
So we just got this out. I'm actually I'm writing, currently writing the next book, which won't have the mechanical rule set. It'll have some, you know, flourishes. It'll have some new stuff in it. But it's going to cover all of the Master Saga and New Generation Saga in one book. Yeah. Now, besides the, the books, you also have uh, a bunch of games also. Yeah, we have four games here. We have Robotech Attack on the SCF-1, which is a tower defense, story-driven cooperative game for one to five players. Best with four, but you can stretch it up to five. Uh, it takes about two hours to play, but we have some scenarios that are a lot shorter. They take about half hour, 40 minutes. Um, so it's sort of like a prestige, big strategy Robotech game. We also have season next, we have Ace Pilot. This is the exact opposite. It's a family-oriented game, uh, two to four players competitive. It plays in 15 to 20 minutes. And then we have the companion game to that, which is called Cyclone Run. And Cyclone Run is based on the new generation saga of Robotech. And um, it plays similarly to Ace Pilot, but it's got like a kick uh, complexity. Um, once again, plays about 20 minutes, good for two to four. My, my eight-year-old plays it, so he can play it. Uh, and then we have Brace for Impact, which is a kind of like a party game. It's a cooperative game. You do need a, like a GM-type person to run it, so you need someone to sort of run it. It plays off a soundtrack or plays, um, plays through cards, uh, but someone runs it in real time, and it plays up to 15 players. So it's a pretty, pretty crazy kind of fun game. So where can anyone pick this up? So all our games are in distributorship, so they will make it to stores. Uh, right now, we are still in pre-sale for our RPG, because that hasn't hit the market yet. Um, so you can go to strangemachinegames.com and purchase the RPG. I believe we have the dice, uh, some accessories on there. Um, and then we partner with Japanime, so japanime.com will have it. We're going to have our books up on Amazon, too. Once We, we have to get them the product first. Um, and you know we're still waiting for the the boat to unload its goods so so yeah everything should be fairly readable if you if you have a favorite uh, local game store and they don't have our products they are in distributorship we have products on the shelf so if the distributors tell you it's it's out of stock that made that's not accurate they're <laughs> they are available well thank you so much for your time absolutely thank you for talking to me all right and stay tuned for more stuff